You want weapons? We're in a library. Books are the best weapon in the world. This room's the greatest arsenal we could have. Arm yourself. Doctor Who. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. We are here today with Becky Buell and Jason Prado of the Shasta Public Libraries. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome in. Thank yeah. you for having us. Thank you. Welcome. Can you guys tell us a little bit about yourself, starting with Becky? I'm the customer service supervisor at the Shasta Public Libraries, so I work with the front desk staff and in the back with the sorter, uh, making sure all the books are ready to go back on the shelves and ready for the public. And I am the uh, marketing coordinator for the Shasta Public Libraries, and my main job is obviously is to push out and share all the different services and events that the um, Shasta Public Libraries has to offer at all three branches. So for our listeners across the world, we are broadcasting from Redding, California, which is in the far northern reaches of California. But the information these two have to share should be applicable pretty much everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. So explain a little bit about the history of the Shasta Public Library and your work there. I feel Becky might be the best to answer that question. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm not great with dates, but I know that we had a library here called the Carnegie Library for a number of years. I think it started in sometime in the 1800s, and that had to shut down due to, I believe, funding issues. Then we had the Shasta County Library, which was located on West Street, I believe, and that shut down not too many years ago. Our current library building was built in 2007, but there was a span of time where we didn't have a library in Reading because there wasn't funding for it. And so um, the city got with a company that we work for, which is Library Systems and Services, and they contracted with the city to run the library for the city. So it's the city's building, the collection belongs to the city and the county, and then we, as the employees, run the library for the city to make sure that everything is running the way it should and everyone has access to what they need. A lot of people that I talk to think of the library as a thing of the past. How is it still relevant to today? You know, I hear that a lot from people and it kind of surprises me because libraries are always trying to be on the forefront of things. We're always trying to figure out what the new advancements in technology are and make information available to the public. We have at our library, we have a makerspace that we're still developing and adding new things to. But it has um, 3D printers, has computers that you can access different kinds of graphic design programs on. We have virtual reality computers that people can play with. And all of it's free for the public. We try to keep on the cusp of the new things that are coming out so that people who may not have the money to get involved with that personally can come and try it out at the library for no charge. That's really cool. I love resources like that because it gives opportunities to people who wouldn't normally be able to afford a 3D printer Mm -hmm. or a subscription at a place that offers those. So Mm -hmm. I love hearing that libraries are really trying to push that forward. How does that affect your job as kind of the marketing? How do you try to make those things apparent to people? For our marketing, we have several different channels that we market through. The first one is through internal communications inside the library. And what we actually have inside of um, our main library branch, as well as other branches, is um, screens. And we put up, you know, just little banners or screen posters up there that say, hey, this is what's going on. This is the events we have coming up, or these are the services that we offer. Another thing also is we hand out physical paper pamphlets, actually, um, at our library as well. I mean, so it's a cross between both the digital as well as the physical. And we all, for external communications, we use both our website And we also have uh, social media channels that we outreach to as well. That being said, we also do things called outreach programs. And uh, what these outreach programs entail is us actually going out into the community and um, sharing either um, resources or services that we offer at the library. For example, this past week, we went to um, a local school, a local elementary school here. And our goal there was to inform everybody about all the tutoring and services that we do offer of what their library card can get them when they have access to a library. So if you had the ability to shout from the mountaintops and make sure this information gets into every person's (laughs) mind, what would it be? (laughs) So I can tell you right now, we've done some research on this, and Shasta County just in general is very interesting in the fact that people receive information from all different sorts of channels. 
from digital to radio to mail, actually, believe it or not. So that's one of the, both the difficult and fun parts of my job is that whatever I have to share and inform the public about, I pretty much have to reach out to everything across the spectrum. There's no like, oh, you know, we're really strong in social media, you know, so I can really push this heavy and a lot of people know about it. No, it, it doesn't work like that, at least for up here. You have to push it out everywhere through all different types of marketing channels. I think that's also what's interesting about Shasta County is it's such a huge smattering of demographics. You know, you have people who come here and use this as like a retirement community. So you have older people who are maybe not as technology friendly, although many of them are very savvy. And then you have college age people who are coming here for school or who are leaving here to go to school, but they're like that age where they are interested in, in launching out. And then you have families coming here because it's a beautiful area. And so you have a lot of families raising their kids here. And so I think it's just a really wide array of different people from all over, different age ranges. So I think that ties into the different ways in which you reach out to people is some people aren't comfortable with digital media and they want something they have in their hands. And then other people don't give me paper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lose it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And that's a really good thing to, for authors to keep in mind is when you're marketing your book, you need to consider all of the different ways to contact people. What kind of resources do you guys have in the library to help new authors? Well, we have public computers that are free to access. So if someone doesn't have a computer at home to do the word processing part of it on, that is something that we offer with, of course, free internet access. There are printers there are, of course, all kinds of different books on writing process. We also have a program called Zip Books, where if there's something we don't have at the library, like a certain book on writing that you're interested in, we can get it through that program and have it sent to your house. Then when you finish reading it, you return it and someone else can benefit from the book. Um, so there are lots of resources in that respect. We don't currently have a writing group at the library, although we did have one in the past. And I know that some of our teens have been interested in starting something like that. What would you say, Jason? Do you know of any other resources? We have a book group at the library where people just kind of get together and discuss different types of books. I don't know if that kind of falls within the same line as writing resources. Another thing also to note as well with the printers is that we are actually one of the most inexpensive places to print in town. So it's nice that you don't have to go to one of these major corporate print places and you end up paying like sometimes double or triple for it. For example, if you just want to print out of a physical transcript of whatever you've written you and come to the library and print out there and it's much less. Plus free Wi-Fi throughout the building. Mm -hmm. And we're working on getting print from home enabled so you could actually like work from home, tell it to print, come to the library and pick up your print job. And I know last time I was in there, the local author section, so books written by people from this area, yes. was like right by the front door. Mm -hmm. So how does a local author get their book into your library? So we have a number of authors who have brought in copies that they wanted to donate to the library. And usually they would give that to our head reference librarian, Elizabeth Kelly, and she would add that to the collection. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer to come in because we have to find a record that matches it so that we can bring it into our system. But we are more than happy to look into that. We love having local authors on the shelves. If you bring us more than one copy, then one might go up where the rest of the books are like fiction or nonfiction in their shelving areas, or we could have it housed in the local author section. So yeah, just talk to us. Yep. How long have you been working for the library? I've been at the library for about eight years now. So you have to have a story of an interesting character that has, oh my, <laughs> I am a story person. I love stories. Give me a story. <laughs> There's so many things happen every day at the library. It's never dull. Never. It's really hard now to think of something that stands out because stuff happens all the time and I just kind of am used to it now. <laughs> I understand that. I work as a 911 dispatcher. Oh, And yeah. so after a while, you just kind of like, hey, yeah, it was a normal day. And my normal is not normal. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Some of the strangest things I've found in books that have been returned. Let's see. Yesterday, there was a Q-tip used as a bookmark. Oh, Another I, day. I not used. <laughs> I didn't look that closely. <laughs> <laughs> Another day, there was a packet of fuel additive that was used as a bookmark. Luckily, it hadn't been punctured in any way, so the book wasn't damaged. But it was rather a weird thing to find in a book. Yeah, it's insane sometimes. I, I can actually chime in here really quick. I have a story that our assistant interim director shared with us. 
We do this program called a Veteran Connects a Library. What the program is, is it's pretty much a hub where um, veterans can come in and find out information about different resources that are currently available in the county in order to help them. So, for example, they come in, they have a question about their benefits or just, you know, medical or something along those lines. They can actually come to the library and we can point them in the right direction to where they need to go. There's something called the North Valley Stand Down. Okay. Have um, are you, have you two familiar with it at all by chance? I am, but many of our listeners aren't. So go ahead. Yeah, of course. Um, so what the North Valley Stand Down is, is it's a, a three day event and it's put on by the North Valley Stand Down Association. And what it is, is a three day event where homeless veterans can come there and get a chance to actually stand down. They get their vision checked, um, dental work done, find out about different resources that are available in the community that are very often, you know, for free. Things, again, that we try to go out there is um, we'll actually help issue library cards or see if there's any issues that we can help with their account in order to get it fixed. And we hand out also free books. Sometimes veterans come in there and whether they have kids of their own or grandkids they know of, um, they can come in and we're happy to give away free children's books for them to take and use. We had a gal who finally actually established residency. She finally actually was able to get a place where she could live. And she was able to actually get a full use library card. Prior to this, she was only able to use it for online purposes. But because she got a residency, we were happy to help her get her library card fixed where she's able to use and access everything the library has to offer. And I wanted to chime in. The stand down is not just for homeless veterans either. It's just for underserved veterans who don't have access to the resources that a lot of us kind of take for granted. This is an opportunity for them to come down and meet with people who are there readily available to help them get medical care and dental and different things like that, or even just take a nap somewhere safe. So it's not just for the homeless, but it is definitely for all the underserved veterans in the community. How often do you guys have something interesting, some events happening at the library? All the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Several times a week. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm starting to see is that libraries are for so much more than just checking out books anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like when I was a kid, it was just always go there to get a book and leave. But you guys have groups, you guys have programs, you guys have events. I'm sure that's really common in libraries across the country. One of the great things about libraries is they're for everyone. It doesn't matter what your age is, what your financial demographic is. It's for absolutely everyone to come in and use the resources. It's giving you access to information. And that's what the library is all about. Information, entertainment. We want you to be able to come in no matter who you are and access whatever you need. Some people in the summertime, it's a cooling station for people when it's hot out and they don't have air conditioning. In the wintertime, it's a warm space. You know, it's somewhere safe that they can come and read up on the newspaper or check their email or print something or apply for a job. It's all those things. It's also a good place to come in case your power gets shut off as well. Yes. (laughs) Again, we're in California, so there's a lot of that happening right now. Yeah. For authors, I think one thing a lot of authors struggle with, especially people who want to be but maybe don't have the resources or they have a really great story but they don't really have solid access to the internet, a library is a great place to go read books that you've always wanted to read but can't really afford to buy to start getting those ideas that you have down on paper where you might not be able to do that otherwise. Like, I'm seeing so much potential in libraries. (laughs) Yeah, it's also a fantastic place to do research because I know sometimes with a lot of authors, I'm sure both you can try, it's, it's a lot of research and trying to find, you know, characters and stories, you know, that kind of spark and inspire you. And the library is a fantastic resource for that. For I mean, for example, the internet is a wonderful tool, and but some people may not have access to it all the time. So a library is a great place just to come in and use the internet. The way we have our internet usage set up is there's really a quote unquote no limit to what you need to use our computers for. There's no like you come in for an hour and that's it. You're done for the day. We're happy to renew people's uh, time at the library. So if they have to be there for an hour, two hours, three hours, uh, we're more than willing to give them their time in order for them to accomplish what they need to do. And if you have your own device, our Wi-Fi is free. It's over the whole building, so you can just find a quiet space and sit there all day if you want to. So I love my cat, but my cat absolutely adores my writing book that I write in because I'm a pen and paper person. 
So if I need to get away from the rest of the world and have a place to just sit down and write, the library is a good option? Yes. Our second floor is considered our quiet floor. And then we also have small group study rooms that you can check out for two hours at a time. Usually it's just two hours a day because they are pretty popular. But if you need some quiet space away from everyone where you can focus when not be interrupted, uh, the library is a great place to go for that. Plus, we also have DVDs and music and all kinds of other things like that to keep you inspired. What does it take to start a group at the library? Like you were saying that they used to have a writing group. Mm -hmm. What would it take to start a new one? So I think the main reason that we stopped having one is because there wasn't anyone to lead it anymore. So probably just reaching out to Elizabeth Kelly to have some dedicated time. If he wanted it to be like a library sponsored event that we put in our newsletter, we could look into that being a possibility. If you just want to come with a group of friends and rent out a space, that's also a possibility. So it doesn't have to be something that's open to everyone. If you want to have like a private writing group, you can do that as well. How good is the people watching at the library? Oh, it's so good. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. I know that's one thing that I like to do to help me create a character is to just see people's mannerisms and how they act and everything like that. So a library might be a good place to just kind of sit quietly and watch. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. I mean, like I said earlier about the different kinds of people that we have in our community, you see that as a a great crosshatch at the library. You see families, you see little kids who are just super excited to get their first library card and go check things out. You know, you see people who are older and maybe not able to get out as much or they come in with their caretaker and get books. Or you see college age kids, you just you see all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life. And it's pretty hilarious at times. The different characters that you see in characters is a good word for it. (laughs) (laughs) So I often am drinking tea while I'm reading or writing. Do you guys have like a coffee shop or am I allowed to bring in something from Starbucks? We do have a cafe. We ask if you bring in a beverage that it has a lid that will seal it tightly because we are concerned with spills and trying to keep the library a clean space. So we don't allow food in the building itself, but there is a little cafe that has seating area in the lobby area if you wanted to sit outside and have a snack or get your you know sugar level up so you could come back in and keep writing. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like people to know about the library, especially authors? I guess I would just say just check out your local library. Just go in and see what they have. And if there's something in particular you're looking for, ask someone. If we don't have a way to get it for you or we don't have it in the library accessible, we may know a resource that you can get it. We partner with Shasta College Library. We try to reach out to all different aspects of the community to try and find resources that people might be able to utilize. And we are always looking for ways to help. Yeah. And um, just kind of on a side note about people's perception of the library, just in general, a lot of people at these libraries, they're there to help. And I know that sometimes what libraries can be associated with can be sometimes in the negative. However, a lot of the times what we found, at least for our patrons, especially people who are brand new, is once they actually step foot into the library and start using our resources, their first reaction is usually like, wow, this is fantastic. I didn't know you had these resources. So for people listening on this and think kind of library is just someplace that maybe you may not want to go, I encourage people to kind of challenge that aspect of it and give the library a chance. Go in there and actually see what is available because you may be surprised of what you actually might find. All right. Do we have any final thoughts? Well, one thing that I do want to mention is since we're always looking for new things to reach out with in technology aspects as well as in print, we are looking into hopefully in the future developing a podcasting space at the library. So if you know people who are getting started in podcasting or need a quiet space to record, that is something we are trying to work into in the next year. So a quiet space without like police sirens? Hopefully. Yes, hopefully. Fire fire, fire (laughs) fire sirens. Fire sirens. Sorry. Well, thank you both so much for joining us today. It's been great having Mm -hmm. you and great learning a little more about libraries and what they can offer. This is a huge resource for anybody because like you said, free. There's no cost to going to checking out books, to using the Wi-Fi, having that opportunity to do research that you may not otherwise have. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. We had a great time. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>